Between Afghanistan and Ukraine, there's a lot going on in the foreign policy space today. Um, but uh, I'm going to resist talking about either of those topics and instead return uh, to the topic of the, uh, the shooting of uh, uh, Dante Wright, that was his name, uh, and the ensuing riots uh, that uh, followed his death. Now, the reason for this is because I want to correct the record. Um, the initial information that we got um, was apparently false. Uh, you know, I guess I, sh I should be, I shouldn't be too surprised. Uh, but considering that this was not something that the media was pushing very hard, I thought the initial information I got was probably true, um, because you know why would? Uh, but then again, you know, early information things can change, and it turns out uh, that uh, my initial instincts on this case were correct. When I first heard about the shooting of Dante Wright, I waited for the details um, because all we knew is that, oh, okay, well, some guy um, they were trying to arrest at a traffic stop, uh, resisted arrest, and he got shot. And so to me, whether or not it's justifiable uh, to shoot somebody uh, who is running away, who the police are trying to catch, well, it depends on what he did. You know, if he's a dangerous guy, uh, and you really, really need to capture him, and he's a threat to public safety, well, it's justifiable to shoot him. Not necessarily to shoot and try and kill him and execute him. Um, you know, you don't want to do that. But I mean, in, in terms of trying to stop him from getting away and doing whatever it was he was doing. Um, and I said uh, at the time that, you know, hey, if he would turned out to be a murderer or a robber or something like that, you know, this would be a different story. Then we got the report that apparently what he was wanted for was carrying a gun without a license. And I said, well, that's a BS charge. <laughs> you know, we have the Second Amendment in this country. Uh, you should be able to carry a gun whenever you want, wherever you want. Uh, and you shouldn't have to have a license to do it. And if you get caught, you know, without having your silly little, you know, government license, uh, that's not something that you should be arrested for. And even if they are going to arrest you, it's not worth uh, trying to use force uh, to take the guy down if he runs away. Just let him go. He's not a threat. But lo and behold, uh, we have gotten more information again, and it looks like uh, what I initially, you know, was thinking uh, was correct, and that is that uh, Dante Wright was apparently a violent fugitive. He was wanted for armed robbery. Apparently, he, you know, he uh, tried to uh, rob a woman at gunpoint, and she didn't give him any money. I guess he backed down. He decided not to murder her. And he just took his gun and left, uh, and he was charged, skipped, it was uh, let out on a hundred thousand dollars bail. It's pretty big bail, uh, and then he skipped his court date. So this guy is a violent fugitive. Uh, this is not somebody who should be taken lightly. This is not somebody who, when the cops pull over, you know, should just you know expect him uh, to be you know polite and cooperative. And uh, when he runs away. I would hope that the police, their job is to catch criminals, right? To protect and serve. Well, I would hope they wouldn't let the guy go. And so if he decided to run away and he got himself shot and then he ended up, you know, getting in a car wreck after that because he decided to keep driving or whatever and not, you know, stop and try and seek medical attention. Um, or if he just, you know, would have died anyway. If he gets himself shot trying to run from the cops when he's a violent criminal, why, why would anybody feel bad about this? <laughs> I mean, this is an example of a police officer actually doing their job. You know, the cops do a lot of BS stuff all the time. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've been very critical of cops uh, when it comes up on this channel because there's a lot of things they do that I don't like. But this isn't one of those times. <laughs> this is a cop, you know, actually doing what they profess to do, what, the, what, the, what, you know, what we're told the police officers are supposed to do, and that's catch bad guys. And so what? This guy got himself killed. It's too bad. I feel bad for his family. Um, but you know, he made bad decisions. Uh, he, you know, he's, he's not the victim here. Uh, there was a victim, uh, and it was the woman who he uh, tried to rob, uh, who he, you know, I'm, I'm sure uh, scared half to death. And he should have stood trial and uh, gone to prison or whatever it was. Um, uh, you know, whatever the, uh, the sentence that he was that he would have gotten. Uh, maybe he could have gotten a plea bargain. You know, maybe get out in a short period of time, get on with his life, maybe, I don't know, do some thinking and try and uh, change the way he's living. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he didn't do that. He chose instead, no, I'm going to run away. I'm going to skip my court date. 
Uh, and if the cops try and get me, I'm just going to keep running. And eventually they're going to catch you. It's when you're running away and you're, you know, you're, you're kind of a, a bad guy, <laughs> you know, you're going to get caught eventually. I mean, if the standard is that if a guy runs, the cops are not allowed to try and catch him, well, then why wouldn't every criminal just run away? Why would anyone um, uh, who is uh, charged with a violent crime uh, just submit to the police and allow themselves to be arrested without a fight? Um, because apparently, if you put up a fight, the cops are just supposed to let you go? Is that the standard that we're on here? I mean, the only reason why uh, a suspect would give themselves up peacefully is because they know that if they try and run, they're going to lose that fight. You know, if the police uh, surround your home and they get on the megaphone and they say, you know, come out with your hands up, we have you surrounded, what's the implication there? That if you try and run, they're going to shoot you. They're surrounding your house with guns. Of course, this wasn't that exact situation. They weren't surrounding his house. They surrounded his car. And, they, you know, they were all there. Uh, and he said, you know what? No, I'm going to run anyway. And so what? He got shot. Again, too bad. Um, but there's a lot of people in this country who are victimized by police. There's a lot of people who are victimized by uh, all sorts of individuals. Uh, and I feel bad for a lot of them. But, you know, this guy doesn't, he's not going to get a ton of sympathy from me. I have a lot more sympathy for George Floyd. Um, I think that, you know, he was an addict. It's not a fun thing. There's, no, there's not a lot of good options uh, for addicts in this country, I don't think. I think that Portugal handles drug addiction a lot better than the United States. Uh, you know, I don't think that throwing people in prison or arresting them is a, is a great idea. I think that counterfeiting is kind of a BS charge because the federal government, uh, the Federal Reserve, counterfeits all the time. Nobody cares. Uh, they just print money all they want. So I think it's a joke uh, that <laughs> you know, to arrest an American citizen for passing off a, a $20 bill that they or somebody else printed who, you know, didn't have the, uh, the vaunted uh, um, legitimate signature of the Secretary of the Treasury. There's a lot of real sad details. Uh, about the Floyd case. Uh, but this Dante Wright guy, you know, I mean, he was young. He, had a, he was 20. So could he have had a very good life ahead of him if he had reformed himself? Sure. But, you know, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> this guy did not try and improve on his life. It's not like he made one mistake and then now he's trying to make up for it. Uh, no, he made one mistake and, and then another mistake and then, uh, you know, a third mistake. And these mistakes were compounding on each other and getting worse and worse every single time. Uh, you know, first, he attempted to commit armed robbery. Then <laughs> he skipped bail. Uh, and then now he tried to run from the cops so that they wouldn't bring him back in uh, when they know that, you know, he's an armed fugitive. I just... What would you expect here? I'm, I'm really just aghast. I mean, I understand that the rioters are going to riot because of whatever they want. And, I, and and that goes perfectly in line with what I said yesterday. I stand by almost everything I said yesterday except regarding, you know, um, uh, Dante Wright's character. But, you know, this is just more evidence that the riots have nothing to do with the underlying uh, supposed spark. That, oh, another black man killed by the cops. It's like, well, I'm pretty sure even pretty sure even urban black people uh, want uh, violent thugs off the street, and they understand that if <laughs> that things like this are going to happen if the cops are getting bad guys off the street. And so obviously, uh, there are a lot of underlying causes uh, that contribute to the riots, uh, much more so than this whole Dante Wright case, or else, you know, the facts that I just told to you about this case. Um, would have deterred a lot of people from rioting. People would have heard that and thought, hmm, oh, is that the case? He was actually uh, a violent criminal who, uh, you know, tried to rob a woman at gunpoint? If that was really people's only uh, motivation, that they feel like some innocent person was murdered uh, like a dog in the streets, um, then, you know, they would, they would reconsider and they would reevaluate the situation and a lot less of them would be rioting. But my, my guess is the riots are going to get bigger, not smaller. And that's because the facts never really mattered in this situation. And so I have to say, I, I'm pretty astonished that this Kim Potter woman, the cop uh, who shot Dante Wright, has already been charged because how do they charge her with anything? What I, I highly doubt that the police handbook uh, for Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, says, okay, now when you're dealing with a potentially armed, uh, violent fugitive, if they flee, you just let them go. You don't try and stop them. 
I highly doubt that their that their training dictates that. Now maybe it does, uh, and so maybe this woman was way out of line. Maybe the 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 city uh, ordered her to just let anybody go if they try and run. But again, I doubt that that's the case. And if that's true, if instead of saying that officers are just supposed to let anybody who doesn't want to be arrested go, and they're not allowed to use force to try and subdue them, especially if they're violent criminals um, who have committed acts of violence with guns in the past, if in fact they are supposed to subdue these, uh, these people, oh, what did she do wrong? Or you just don't like that it got you bad press, so you're going to charge her with a crime that she didn't commit? I mean, really, I think that this is a more problematic prosecution uh, than the Chauvin trial, even though she's being charged with a much lesser, um, uh, something much, uh, um, she's getting much lesser charges so far than Chauvin. Uh, Chauvin was charged with second-degree murder, which is, I mean, totally ludicrous. I think that uh, the, the manslaughter charge in Chauvin's case makes more sense, at least. Um, but, you know, when it comes to Chauvin, uh, you know, the argument is that George Floyd wasn't resisting, that this was an improper use of force, uh, and that uh, Chauvin kept kneeling on his neck, you know, after he was already not resisting. Um, which, again, even if you... That, that's different from the moral case. I'm just talking about the legal case. Uh, morally, I don't think that, you know, I don't think that they should have arrested Floyd for anything anyway. But again, legally, um, you know, the, uh, the case here is that did he use the right amount of force to uh, subdue uh, this suspect who they were trying to arrest? But in this woman's case, it's very clear uh, that um, uh, Dante was actively resisting. He was running away. He drove away. After she shot him, he drove away. Um, so, ah, whoa. Where, where's the case? You know, I take back anything I said about her being, you know, stupid for, for having done this. Um, because this is a perfectly reasonable case. I mean, if a cop is ever going to shoot somebody, it's going to be in a case like this. I mean, what, is the cop supposed to, is the cop only supposed to pull their gun if the, uh, if the fugitive pulls their gun? I, uh, I mean... I don't mean to be stumbling over my words so much here, but I'm really, I really find this case perplexing. But again, really, the the non the nonsensical um, nature um, of this case, I guess, underscores my point from yesterday. Just like I was saying, that this really is about so much more uh, than the individual cases. And you know, even though I never defended Chauvin because I was, I'm not a big fan of his conduct, um, I do feel compelled to uh, defend this Kim Potter woman. And I'm not a back to blue guy, not by any means. Uh, but there is, uh, there's obviously, even if you don't want to call them police, there's got to be somebody somewhere uh, who hunts down criminals. There's, there's always a place for that in society. You don't have to call them police if you don't want to. Um, you could call them something else. You could say, I want to abolish the police. You still want somebody to catch the criminals. I, at least I, I've never met anyone who doesn't. They want somebody to do that. So in that context, what would you have had her do differently? Honest question. And if you disagree with me, please let me know because I'm, I'm perplexed by this. Um, you know, because I, my, my personal politics, I don't get into this a whole lot about my personal, um, you know, philo deep philosophy about things. I would consider myself an anarchist. And I don't have a problem with this. So, you know, if I'm if I don't think that this is an overreach of police power, who does? And what's the logic behind it? So I think that's about all I have to say on this topic. Hopefully, I can let the Dante Wright thing rest for a couple of days and talk about Ukraine and Afghanistan, uh, which, in the grand scheme of things, are much more important uh, than you know the latest riots in Minneapolis. So I will try and get back to that tomorrow.